All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the home stretch. We are going to cover selection and actions, and that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now, now that we can scroll through, I want to select because scrolling is one thing. Um, but now right. I want to, I don't want to accidentally mute somebody or ban somebody, right? So I want to purposely, when I'm on ban, I want to pers purposely um, select that option for that player to execute. So basically it's selection slash execute, and then we'll put in the actions that are being executed. All right, so to do this, we are going to do another button. We're going to do, um, we're going to scroll down and we okay, will, then. yes, events. And we're going to do the, when button one is pressed. Okay. All the way in the bottom? Um, we can put it right, yeah, we can put it at the bottom because I think we're done with the menu stuff. So put it okay. at, towards the bottom. It doesn't matter. Again, none of these matter exactly where you put them. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so when button one is pressed while well, grab, we're going to put an if statement first because we want to check if something is going on. So we want to check if scroll is true because obviously we don't want to okay. accidentally activate or execute an action or a selection mm -hmm. without you know something being true. So we want scroll to be true. So we're going to go ahead and copy the scroll and put that in the if condition. And then, because remember, when object is released by player, scroll is set to false, right? Okay. So, but if I have it in my hand, it's because I want to do something with it, right? So if I have it in my hand, that means I want these options to be available to me. And then mm -hmm. obviously, if I point it to a player, once I point it to a player and I click on that player, then scroll becomes enabled. So if scroll is enabled, then I can scroll through the options and I can make a selection of the options. If I let go of the object, then scroll is set to false, which means I cannot execute um, or scroll through that menu options. Okay, so now um, if, scroll is, if scroll is true, we're going to do three ifs. I put, well, I put a scroll in there, right, in the condition? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yes, that's it. So okay. if scroll is true, um, we're going to put. Saying, I'm sorry. Expression in if condition must be a Boolean. Oh, got you. Okay. Let me see. Okay, if scroll, I put the purple pill. If scroll, that's it. Okay. Oh, okay, but there it go. Okay. okay. Got it? Got it, got it, yes, got it. That okay. one, right? The purple one? The pink scroll. Got you. Yep. I put the pink scroll. Excuse me. I put okay. the pink scroll. All right. So, so okay. if the pink scroll. Yeah. So if scroll is true, um, what we're going to do is put three if conditions inside because we will have three options, right? Okay. So it's nested. If, yes. if, if. Yes. Three empty ifs. They're not nested. Okay. They're not nested within each other, right? No. Mm -mm. No, got it. Okay, they're siblings. Not Pretty much, siblings. exactly. Then we're going to get the double <laughs> equal signs and put it in each one of them. Okay. Then we're going to grab the scroll and put pink. that a number scroll. The pink one? The number, the scroll. number scroll. Okay, the yellow one? Yep. In A? Yes. So we're going to put all of those in the A section um, because we're going to check Triplets. which one. There you go. We're going to check which one <laughs> is currently selected. Is zero selected? Is one selected? Is two selected? And now on the B side, we're going to go ahead and put a number input, an empty okay. zero. And then we're going to change. Well, the first one will leave zero. The second one will change to one. Okay. And the third one will change to two. Got it. All right. So we should have if scroll equals zero, if scroll equals one, if scroll equals two, right? Yes. Yep. Um, all right. So th these are our selections. So we're doing it. We're selecting by pressing the uh, button one, which is A. 
Um, so if I press A, if scroll is true, and then it's going to check the scroll equal zero or the scroll equal one or the scroll equal two. And then we can go ahead and put our actions underneath here. So the first action, we already know that zero is mute. So we need a mute action. So in the actions tab, we're going to scroll down to player. And in the player options, we have a set player voice setting two. We're going to grab that. Okay. And we're going to nest that inside of the scroll equals zero. Okay. And it says set voice setting two, and we have different options, default, global, nearby, extended, whisper. Whisper is like you have to be within two feet of each other. It's like super close. And then we have mute. So we'll go ahead and pick mm -hmm. mute. And then we need a player. So who's going to be the player? We're going to go to our variables, and we're going to grab that selected player. And we're going to put okay. in the selected player. Got it. Okay. All right. So that's mute. So mute is action is, is coded. The next one is respawn or kick to jail. So this is a respawn. So we're going to go mm -hmm. to motion, player motion. Motion. And we're going to grab respawn player and that's that under scroll equals one. And what player are we going to respawn? The selected player, of course, the same one. And okay. then we're not going to respawn to self because self is not a spawn point. So we're going to create another object variable. So it's an object type. You can call this jail. It's a jail object because it's, it's really just a spawn point, but we're going to name it jail. And we're going to put that in the empty spawn point. So we're going to respawn the selected player to jail if I press a button to execute while I'm scrolled over number one, which is the second option, which is send to jail or kick. Okay. Right. And then the last one is to ban. So what we're going to do, we're actually just going to copy a respawn, the one that we just made and paste it underneath as well for scroll equals two, because we want to okay. send them to jail, but now we want them to, every time they come into the world that they automatically get spawned to jail, right? So to do that, we need to give them a player persistent variable and we need okay. to activate that. So I believe I created one already. Let me check. So player persistent variable, yes. So you can create a variable here, guys at home, and you can type the name, click save. So I have one here called perm ban, like permanent ban. Perm. It's always a number. It could only be a number. So, but this is important because I can check their number every time they come into the world. And if I check their number when they come into the world and it's a number one or a number two, whatever I we set it to, um, we can respond them immediately to the jail. So now, so under the respawn that we just made for scroll equals two, we're going to add a set PPV. So to do this, we're going to go to um, values, okay. values tab. And under our favorite set two, you'll see set player persistent variable or var two. Mm. Let's grab that one and let's put it underneath the respawn selected to jail for our scroll number two. And it's going to ask us to change me. So we're going to set it to the perm ban variable. Mm. And we're going to set perm band to one because everybody has a perm band variable, but they're all set to default is zero. So you have one, I have one, and anyone that comes into your world has that variable, but it's, uh, it's zero. So I'm not going to change that variable for anybody except the people I ban. And so when I okay. select ban on somebody, you can go ahead and drop the selected player pill into the player. So anytime okay. I select, we select the ban, we're going to respawn them and we're going to change their variable for permanent ban persistent variable to mm. one. So now they're tagged. Basically, we can look at it like that. They're tagged. They have a number one on their head. Everyone else is zero because the only people that have a number one are the people that I banned, that I pressed the button to ban. Right. So we can also do. Um, do, do, do. Let's do quickly just so we can see for ourselves, the person holding it. Let's do, go, let's go to actions real quick, since we're pretty much okay. almost done here at the very last few code blocks. Let's go to actions, scroll all the way down, and we're gonna do a show simple pop-up for player. We'll just keep it simple. Pop-up, show simple pop-up, got it. And let's go ahead and put the player ourselves. So it's button one is pressed while grabbed by player. Let's grab that player pill. And button one is pressed. 
Um, um, I'm sorry. Where where did you want the pop up? We're gonna put it under um, each one, but right now just leave it as one, and then we'll oh. duplicate it. Yeah. So okay, grab so the player pill. Too. Yeah, grab the player pill, and then put it into the show pop up for player, which will be us, the one that's holding it. And okay. then uh, we will do. We'll change it to three seconds. We don't need five seconds. And then the text. Okay. Right now, I have it under the last one. So the last one is uh, band. So I'm just going to put band. And then I'm going to okay. duplicate that. Um, yeah, I'm going to duplicate that and put I it under. So. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We'll duplicate it and put okay. it under the other ones and then just change what it will say. So mute for mute, um, kicked or jail for kick. It could be anything. Okay. But obviously, okay. we want it to go. According. Yeah. <laughs> and then band right correct well you did it backwards I'm sorry. yeah mm -hmm. all right so that part is done um we need to do just a couple last things one of them will be we need to execute that when the player spawns into the world, that if they have variable one, that they're respawn to the jail. So let's let's duplicate one of the respawn uh, selected to jail. Let's duplicate that. Mm -hmm. And let's create, let's go all the way to the top. So grab that and let's drag it all the way to the top. Drag to where player enters world. Okay. Where it should be towards the top when player enters world somewhere. My world is the world is entered by player. Okay, got it. Yeah. And I don't know where my respawn went. <laughs> oh. I lost it. <laughs> uh oh. Maybe it, yeah, I think I lost it. I, maybe I deleted it. So I'm just going to copy it again and drag all the way up. And make sure I don't see it as I'm scrolling up. I don't. Okay, so when world is entered by player. So we're going to put it underneath that if statement. Um, and now we're going to create another if statement here when world is entered by player. So mm -hmm. this is this is separate of the if that's there to check the mod names. So Okay, so another if. We have, yeah, so we have if. And then we're going to put the respawn nested to this if condition. Okay. All right. And my battery controller is low, so this is good timing because we should have a few minutes left. <laughs> so we're going to say, um, we're going to grab the equals, equals, put it in the conditions. On the left side, we're going to get, um, go to values and grab the pill that says get player persistent variable. Okay. And then change it to permanent ban. The one, the get user persistent variable permanent ban value for permanent player. Ban. The player is going to be the player that just entered the world. Okay. And also the player that's getting respawned is no longer the selected. The player that's going to respawn is the player that just entered the world. Okay. So player, player, du <laughs> player, player. Do we yeah. duplicate player, player? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have an equal sign. So we need to put a number there. So grab a number value. And we're going to change that 0 to 1 for the number value. So it should say if get user variable permanent band for value player equals 1. So if this person's PVV equals 1, respawn that player to jail when they enter the world. Okay. So value for player equals 1. Is that correct. correct? Correct. Okay, so then I gotta get the equals one. Yeah, you should. I, I, yeah, you should have put the double equals in there and the if. Yeah. On the left. Yeah, and then yeah. So just mm -hmm. grab a one. You just put a one there. Just grab. Okay. Just and I just just grab that from the menu. Thingy. Correct. Uh, values I meant. Okay, and then just the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so get persistent variable per band val value for player equals one. Correct. Okay. All right. And then we can also do um, 
a couple more things here to clean up, but we'll do that. I'll do that later because my battery controller is dying. So I just, let's go ahead and test these last two things that we did so we can mark them off. So now, since, since we don't have an unmute and we're just going to test the um, sent to jail and the permanent ban. Okay. Yeah. So okay. sent to jail. So let me send you to jail and then you can permanently ban me. Well, that's your tool. Let me grab my tool. <laughs> Okay. All right, so I'm pointing at you, and then I'm going to hit the trigger. Then I'm going to go no. ahead and scroll through, and now I'm going to press A to execute. And it says she was sent to jail, but guess what, guys? She was in respawn because we did not connect the respawn points, <laughs> and that's what we need to do now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and connect the spawn point that's in the jail. There we go. And now I should be able to send Carrie to jail. No. So let me point at her. Trigger. Jail is selected. There uh. we go. And now <laughs> she is in the jail. And I can't jump. And I so can't now, move. So now come out, Carrie, into build mode. And then okay. go ahead and um, do a permanent ban for me so people at home can see that every time I go into the world, um, I'm automatically sent to the jail here. Ban. Okay. So I'm going to ban you. Oh. B, B, ban, A. Banned. Oh, right. and the, the words ban came out. Exactly. The pop book came out. So now I'm in here, and now <laughs> if I were to go into edit mode and I just press up to go into preview mode, I'm immediately back in the jailhouse. <laughs> Even if I try to go like over here and point my yeah. pointer, I'm immediately back in jail because it's registering me as coming the into the world, and it's gonna check my PPV, and my PPV is one, so it's always gonna send that player to the jail. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! They worked. <laughs> All right, so we go ahead and mark that done. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this basic and beginner tutorial. <laughs> we covered a lot of different topics, while loops, if statements, else. Um, we went through different types of lists, player lists, string lists, mm -hmm. and we got to generate menus, select, and do three things. Um, the next mod tool will be have more features, um, more things you guys um, can use. Um, you'll be able to scroll through the players in the world without having to point at them and whatnot. Um, but this video was just to get you started and also teach you some important basics um, to the Cold Blacks here in Horizon World. So I hope you guys enjoy it and can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.